creature how have you leveled so fast how is this possible what tricks did you use what mysteries what magic did you incorporate into your life in order to make this leveling dream happen so quickly you've been playing less than a week than me i have a full like 10 days on you yet you've out leveled me now um this has generally been the feedback from a lot of people <laughs> it's like how did you get this done uh i'm not leveling particularly fast actually uh i certainly don't think so i've been playing for like uh i have a lot of slash played but there's a lot of afk time in there so slash played isn't really relevant however people who watched me level certainly the huge amount of you like 600 of you are in our guild right now uh have been like why are you leveling so fucking fast like how did you do that uh so this video is more about little tips and tricks and certainly more interesting for me the things that i've realized coming back to classic and compared to what i originally thought was good ideas because i was a noob back then we all were uh and some things that we've picked up so some of this stuff is like straight fact and other stuff is a little anecdotal but it holds water so first and foremost leveling add-ons make things much better uh because the routings i said in the last video of quests in world of warcraft are very haphazard uh blizzard had some general ideas about what they wanted to do but the key important thing is that world of warcraft classic leveling is very different than what we have say from the burning crusade onwards that old in that it's just a grind that's it it's just a grind it's a very thinly veiled grind quests are very helpful uh because they're pointing you in the right direction but essentially they're just grinds that's why a lot of them have very low and weird drop rates uh that's why you find that they're like just collect stuff and why we're kind of hoping in modern era while it moves on from there um as i finally resurrect as my son threw me off a thousand needles off free win post um it's a very thinly failed grind which means the biggest downside you have in world of warcraft is travel 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 is the worst and the way you're supposed to do it or to do it efficiently supposed is a, is a hard word to use but the the way you're supposed to do it is to always be fighting something even when you're moving from a to b you should be killing every single mob between where you are right now and where you're going okay you should be grinding all the time moving backwards backpedaling you'll see a lot of players do this who've played a lot of private servers is that they're barely ever out of combat and the X xp is just constantly trickling in even if they're not killing things that are quest mobs right they're not things they need to kill but they're killing everything because the whole game from zero to 60 is just grinding enemies that's where it's going to come from so that's what you should be doing even if you're you're doing questing which is what i'm doing you should still be killing things along the way along that note then one of the biggest errors i made in classic and now realize that i made was i always thought yellow quests were the best uh green quests i doubt leveled and were kind of shitty now and not worth time not worth playing and I do recall in Classic, a lot of times if quests quest turn green, I would just abandon them uh, and just leave them there. And I think a lot of people are focused on being in constantly in yellow quests and constantly killing mobs that are yellow to them. Hugely incorrect. I mean, this really does have some class dependency to it, so your, viol your mileage may vary on this. But green mobs are your bread and butter. More so than in the current game, certainly if we just compare it to BFA, uh, your chance to hit and be hit is dramatically changed by what level you are. So if you're fighting mobs that are equal or one level above you, they may appear yellow, yet your chance to hit is greatly reduced. Uh, your ability to do critical strikes is greatly reduced. Their ability to hit you is greatly improved, which means it has a double-edged effect of one, takes you way longer to kill stuff, and increases your downtime because you're going to get hit a lot more. Again, your mileage may vary playing hunters or whatever, you know, some warlock specs and certainly AOE grinding mages will have different different variations of this. But certainly if you're playing melee, what you'll find is less, unless you're very overgeared, which typically you're undergeared, uh, which is why items are so much more important in classic, as many of you are realizing, like you get a good weapon, like the whirlwind axe for 12 levels. It's so good. It makes such a dramatic difference. But if you find that once you switch to green mobs, you can now take on two, three enemies at a time. You can actually do that with zero downtime. Just move into another pack, start cleaving again. Uh, all these things add up to a consistently faster leveling experience. And you'll just find that you're just sitting down way less. You're having to bandage way less. And trying to keep yourself in the green mode is the ideal. You'll also find that your add-ons that you use, whether it's AAP, whether it's Zygor, whether it's some of the other ones people have mentioned to me, they work really hard to make sure you're doing green quests. They work really hard to ensure you're doing green quests because of this reason, right? It's so important to do this. And what you'll actually find is uh, an interesting thing that happened to me a couple of times now is, uh, for example, when I finished the Barons, I had like eight quests to turn in. 
Yeah, the add-on said, just grind now till 25. Like, don't turn these in. And you're like, why? Like, if I turn these in, I'm going to ding 25. I'll be done, right? And the add-on's saying, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Hold them. Grind out this level right now because this is much, much better. When these, Because uh, the next stuff you're going to do, we want that to be green. And we want this boost of XP you're going to get when you get into the next level because that's going to equal to the other quest turning green as you go to like 26, 27, 28. So that's what it's trying to do in a lot of cases is keep you in the green zone because green just speeds up the whole thing. Like green enemies in general, based on quest rewards, based on how often you're likely to upgrade your gear. Again, a lot of variation in this. But generally speaking, staying in green means you're just going to crit enemies more often. They're going to do way less damage to you. They're going to miss you more often. And you're generally going to see a lot more hitting happen. And anecdotally, a lot of people are finding that they proc more. And that's generally because you're hitting more. You're hitting more regularly. You're missing less. You're being parried less. You're being dodged less. And therefore, your procs are going off more often. And they're finding they're just smoothly grinding through enemies if they keep them in the green zone, right? So that's another big piece of advice. The next one that I'm seeing a lot of people make the mistake of doing is there is obviously a lot of competition depending on what server you're on for quest mobs. And when that's happening, people are camping the spawn point by just standing there. Like, like, like Remember, the game is a grind. The quest is way less relevant. It's way, way less relevant. So what I've done in nearly all occasions, and again, your mileage may vary depending on your server, is when you see a lot of people camping the spot, try and get invited to the group. If at possible, that means that somebody else can tag it. So one of these other guys who just stands still and waits for the spawn, let them do that. That's fine. What you do then is you run around and keep pulling enemies towards them. Keep in combat as much as possible. I am constantly moving, running around, just looking for anything. Even if it's green, just pull it in. You know, if it's like really on the border of being gray. Gray enemies we're not going to bother with, obviously. But if it's green, get it in there. Pull it in. Even if it's like 30 XP, just keep the XP trickling in at any and all occasions right drag it in drag it in get it done uh the next piece of advice i'll give you is dungeons so some people are dungeon grinding i mean that's everyone's got their own thing some people love dungeon grinding other people hate dungeon grinding but they certainly feel like it's the only way of efficiently gain xp uh for me i disagree i think exploring the world and doing quests is my preferred style yet i still do dungeons but i won't do dungeons more than once unless it's definitely got something i'm going to keep for the next 12 levels so armory would be a great example for a warrior you're going to get herod's shoulder you're going to get the helmet you'd hope to get the legs you might want the ravager uh something like that which you're going to keep for the next 10 levels sure you might run a few armories to try and get that stuff done and you're going to collect xp along the way but you're doing it with a purpose beyond that i don't do a dungeon more than once unless uh i and before i go in i make sure i have as many quests as possible so when people ask me to go to a dungeon like do we have every quest are they shareable is there any uh like uh progressive quests that i need to do some pre-setup for is there any chain quests involved here if so i'm going to do them first because i only intend to do this dungeon once and i want to do every single quest while i'm in there so you think about wailing caverns or something like that five or six quests in there get them all before you go in there's some pre-quests to it the same with rfc rfc you like it's in ogramar dead easy dead quick but there's like two three four quests in there some of them have some pre-quest stuff go and get that done same with scarlet monastery there's lots of scarlet monastery quests there's like five for the horde well, some of them require some pre-questing. Some of them require you even doing a previous dungeon, which then leads to this dungeon, right? I think it's RFK. Uh, make sure you, if you're going to go into a dungeon, because again, a lot of travel time, a lot of the dungeons are in places where there's very little XP. You think about Scarlet Monastery, it's in Tirasfal Glaze. There's not much XP around there. The low-level elites outside, you're quickly going to out-level while you're doing Scarlet Monastery. So you end up traveling for a long period of time without being able to earn experience. Uh, therefore, make sure it's going to be worthwhile. That's what I'm saying. If you're going to do a dungeon, make sure it's worthwhile. We did no, uh, Nomagon today. Fine. I'm going to make sure I've got all the Nomagon quests, right? If we're going to do uh, Black Fathom Depths, I'm going to make sure I've got every single quest there. Because there's like five quests. Some of them are from Thunderbluff. Some are from there. Try and diversify your party. Who's going to Thunderbluff? Who's going here, right? We'll all meet up and we'll share this stuff. Because I only want to do one run. One run is going to be really efficient, really rewarding. Full runs worth of XP. Turn in four or five quests. That's a good use of your time. If you're going to do the dungeon like four or five times with picking up quests, going back and then doing it again because I missed one quest, that's when for me, one, you're going to start out leveling the dungeon. It's going to come less efficient. It just generally just sucks. Again, I'm not promoting here speed leveling, but people want to level efficiently and they don't want to feel like I'm wasting my time. So they don't want to look at someone like me who's been back for like three days is out leveled them and they've been leveling for 10 days and they're like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Like, aren't you just doing questing? Yeah, I'm doing questing. Are you grinding dungeons? No. Oh, so how have you done that? S simple. This process. 
Always be doing something. Always be earning XP. Always be getting these things done. Bear in mind, it is important that you're attacking the right level enemies and making good use of it. There are surprisingly good banding of questing here. This just requires traveling, which is where the add-ons come in. You need to know which side you're going to be in, as I make sure I'm not logged out. So that's what I'm doing. It's as simple as that. Those three steps, essentially, being efficient with my time, making sure it's working. I hope that helps you out because I know a lot of people have been like, oh, I've been grinding yellow quests and I can kill like one mob and then I need to eat and drink. It's like, I thought that too. I really did. Uh, I thought that it was the way it is. And it doesn't matter because you might say, these things apply in BFA, like the hit chance and all that, that does apply in BFA. It does, but remember, in current game, you get basically your full toolkit by like level 10. In classic, you don't really, your class doesn't really start to take shape until like late 30s, early 40s. You're still gaining new abilities. You're still gaining things that make sense, right? I mean, I'm like, what, 33 or something, 32? Uh, and I still don't have like Mortal Strike or anything like that. I'm still working my way towards it. So all these things are like, you, your class isn't fleshed out by then. And let's be honest, the enemies in Battle for Azeroth from level 0 all the way to 120 are so fucking easy that it doesn't matter in the first place. That's just the nature of things. That's just the truth of it, is they're so unbelievably easy that it this stuff doesn't matter. The classic mobs are much harder, which means this stuff matters much more. Use every scroll you find. If you find a scroll on an enemy, just pop the scroll, right? Buy food, for fuck's sake. This is another one I'm seeing is people like, oh, I've run out of bandages, I've got this. It's I've got to save money for my epic mount. Buying appropriate level food or even the stuff that's slightly higher costs you just a few silver for a stack of like 40. I know people are looking for mages and all that, but remember, mage food gets out leveled as well. There's something you got to bear in mind. Plus, it despawns when you log out. Get yourself a good stack of food. Look at my bags right now. You can see here, I'm carrying three of these, 13 of these, 16 of these, nine of these. I've got plenty of food when I'm out and about. I've only got 37 bandages, but I've got plenty of food. If I get nice high level food, fully refills my health super quickly, back on, keep going, right? That's the nature of it. So that's my advice to you. Go and get that done. Thank you very much for listening. I'm not leveling super fast, but that is how I'm doing it.